Welcome to this YouTube channel. Today we'll be carrying out a molecular docking practical. In the last video, I showed us how we can select the dimensions of the correct binding site for docking. And today we are going to an actual practical where we use Pyrex and Discovery Studio to carry out molecular docking. Now the first thing that is expected for anyone carrying out molecular docking is to obtain the target receptor and you can obtain that receptor from a protein data bank. One of the most common one you will find is at RCSB and that's the website. Now the choice of the target receptor you're working with depend on the disease or microorganism you're working on and that's why it is important you consult literature and see the receptors that others have worked with and how they um, relate to what you're working on and then based on the knowledge you've gotten from literature choose um, an appropriate receptor if you're working on a disease say um, diabetes then it's important you go through literature on diabetes and then select the correct receptor if you're working let's say on a microorganism like mycobacterium tuberculosis or another form of bacterium it's important you go through literature and see what has been done. That will help you to, se to select the correct receptor. From literature, you'll find the code for that target receptor and it's very easy for you to now go and download it. Now, in this study, we'll be downloading, we'll be using a receptor that is targeted towards um, anti-diabetic studies. Now, so let's see. And the first thing you're expected to do is to get that receptor. So you can see this, this is a receptor. Now, but this is not what I want to use. So I will navigate. Um, let's open another molecule window. So Good. So I want to use okay, I want to use this one IR3. I've consulted literature and then I want to use that target receptor for my docking. Now you can see it when I open that receptor, it shows us a cell and then shows us that you have um, a protein with different strands. Now, it's important that during docking, you actually try to mimic the um, arrangement of that protein in nature. So what we expected to do is to remove the co-crystallized ligand. Now, but before we do that, it's important to use that crystallized ligand to find out um, the binding site like I showed you last time. So let's look at this I'm thinking. Okay, no. Okay, I think we should find it here. Okay, good. AMP300, you can also check this um, target receptor and then we'll be using this co-crystallized ligand. If you observe, once I clicked on it, um, it was highlighted here. So let's get the correct coordinates. Click on attributes and then you can see X, Y, Z. Now this is the coordinate to be working with. So control C, I'll copy it. And now put it in a notepad. So I'll put it in a notepad. So now um I've been able to obtain the coordinates. I got the coordinates from where you have X, Y, Z, and then I've pasted it here. Now, the next thing I would like to do, and cancel this, is to remove all the co-crystallized ligand and the water. So I will remove this, I'll cut this. I'll also remove this, this is also magnesium, cut it. Then I also cut this. Now the next thing 
I will do is to remove the water molecules. You can see this is water, so I'll remove water. Now, some kinds of docking might require the water, but a lot of times we remove water. Now, so once I've removed water and then they go crystallize like, and I can save this as a PDB file. So I'm going to save it as a PDB file. So I will call it, I've done it before, so I, I'll call it one. Now, I've done it before, so I would leave that. One IR tree excluding ligand and water. So you have that here. So I can call this two and then save it. Okay, good. Now, so once you've done that, that means you have your target receptor. But remember, you've removed the co crystallized ligand and you've removed water. Now, the next thing you do is to um, open Pyrex. So let's open Pyrex. Now, before you must have done this, it's important that you had modeled your compound. So you must have used a software, maybe ChemDraw, Chem3D to model your compound or AvogaDraw. So we have Pyrex here. Now, what am I expected to do when I open Pyrex? I will load the molecules I have. So the first thing I would load is okay so good so i will load this you can choose to load this okay that's good now we can also choose to load our compounds so the compounds i'll be loading compounds to be docked a2 Open A2, A1, and A3. So you can see this. So this is good. Now, I also would often like to use the co-crystallized ligand as a form of standard for my docking. So I've downloaded it. You can often get it from the site where you got your um, target receptor. You always find it there. So it's important to download it. So I'll open it. Good. Now, the next thing is to right click on it. And then you're going to convert this compound. You're going to make it a macro molecule. Remember, that's the target receptor, not the ligand, not your compound. So you click on it and then simply click on make macromolecule it has completed the next thing is i will go to other um, compounds those are my compounds and then i'll make this ligand okay correct so go to a1 go to doc make ligand go to a3 go to doc Make ligand, then go to the co crystallized ligand, and then also make ligand. Okay, so that's good. Now go to Vina, click on Vina, and then click on Start. Now it has selected the macromolecule. You can also choose to select. You can see it's here, it's selected, and then it has selected one ligand, but I want to select the other three ligands. So I'll look for them. Okay, I think that's A1. Okay, so we can find them A1, A2, A3. What I'll do is I'll click on forward. Now this is where you also have to be quite careful because we have to um, get the correct dimension. So these are the dimensions given to us minus 23.7664438 now it's not um it's not a more than you must get the exact value but it's important you get something very close to it so 
How do we do that? So I can open it up and then remember for X, this is X. Okay, maybe I did not designate it. So this is X, this is Y, and this is Z. So X is minus 23.76. Or seven 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 six yeah. let's see minus twenty three point okay good so this is the x axis so minus twenty three point seven okay so let's open it up a bit now you can see we've gotten um, the correct binding site after adjusting um, the grid now you can see that x is minus 23.7 um, 6 or oh, we have 79 then y is 29.15 z is 6.97 now it's always important to get something very close to what you are working with now the next thing we can do is to once you've done this this is very key very key so the next thing you do is to forward it now once you do that it will begin to run you can see it so it tells you that it's running and then when it's done you'll find your results now the docking has completed it's completed and then you can see that it provides the docking result in columns we have the first column ligand binding affinity mode rms the lower boundary root mean square deviation value rms the upper bound now the more negative the docking score you know the better the interaction so we can see that it looks as though the crystallized ligand had the best score now let's go down and let's see a1 wow a1 had a very low score minus 3.5 as first then we have minus 3.3 and it's also important that you note the rmsd values because that is also what guarantees the reliability of your results for rsd rmsd values that are like this one 16.427 and 16 points ah, those are and 16.688 that's quite large and then you won't trust that result so you need rmsd values that are actually less than five um, less than five so um, but for the result we've got we can also consider the results from this click on this go to visa less click on the date okay we can see that for a3 minus 4.0 a2 minus 3.0 a1 minus 3.5 and you can see that minus 8.54 to go crystallize like and now what you can do once you've gotten your result is that you can export this result so you can save it as um a csv file so i would love to save it like so i can go to i can call it one ir3 anti-diabetic result and then and save it as a csv file so wow so you can save it as a csv file now you can actually open that file let's go here using excel okay so you can open it using excel and then you can work on it here if you have any challenge please feel free to get across to me Thank you for listening. Don't forget to share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.